Hello everyone, this is going to be my 7th Java Tetris tutorial, and in this tutorial we are going to be setting up the game so that it recognizes when we put in our keys, like when we t press keys on our keyboard that correspond to what we have defined in our config. So that's the block we drew last time, it doesn't matter right now, we can just leave it there for now. I'm going to change these back to something sensible, so left. Uh, right, down, and make rotate up still. I'll leave pause at P. Alright, done. And that's just so that'll be easy to test these out when we get to them. Now, we already have these key listeners down here, and those would work, but I want to actually move this to a separate class, so we're going to make a new class. We're going to call it controller and we can just finish that there and then up here we can do implements key listener control shift o to import that and we're going to go to our tetris main cut the cut those three methods so these three methods just cut them out control x or command x on a mac and then you're just going to paste them into here and that should end all of the errors that we would having previously now we want to make it have one object, which is going to be the Tetris main. So Tetris main game. And now we're going to do a public controller. This is going to create the constructor for it. And we're going to pass in the game when we create it. So after I fix my naming, this dot game equals game. So this game is going to be whatever game gets passed into here. And now we're going to remove this implements key listener. And then down at our init initialize method down here, we're going to right off right before we press the focus we're going to do this dot add key listener new controller this <coughs> and we have to save both files all right so what this means is uh the key listener for our canvas which this extends is going to be everything in this controller class. Now, on key pressed, we're going to do a couple of checks to see which keys are pressed in comparison to these. Actually, yeah, yeah, we'll just do this in key pressed. So, we're just going to have a bunch of if statements here. If E dot get key code. So what this is is uh, the key event E has a couple of arguments that you can get off of it. So the key code is uh, what we're going to use to identify them. And how we're going to do this is we're going to use because right now in our config we only have the names. We have them saved as strings, but we can convert the key code to the string using key event dot we scroll down we get um, dot actually I think we have to do e e dot get get key text and then we pass in the key code and actually I was wrong about this we can just do key event event All right what's this error all right. Dot equals config dot. Er, we'll start with left. Okay. So if we press whatever we have configured to be left, then this should, in theory, print this out. So let's just test that out. Now I press the left key on my keyboard. I know you can't see that, 
but I'm pressing the left key on my keyboard and you can see down here in our console it says left is pressed. So now we're going to close out of this. We're going to copy and paste this. Actually, we're going to paste this once and then add an else to it. And now we'll do right, right pressed. And now we can just copy and paste this three more times because we have three other codes. So now we need to do dot up sorry dot rotate dot down and dot pause and then just change the text inside of these pause pressed down pressed and rotate pressed so now if we save this we can try out all of these, so I'm just going to press left, right, up, down on my keyboard, and you can see that's everything that should have been according to our config. So options, see left, right, down, up, and then pause should be P, if I press that, pause. So all those work. Now I'm just going to make sure they work if we change what keys should be pressed. So let's just say we change this to, uh, like WASD instead. So if we change left to A, right to D, down to S, and up to W, and then we hit done. I'm pressing, right now I'm pressing up, right, and down, left on my keyboard, and nothing is printing in the console down here. But if I go back and I press WASD, WASD, and you can see all of the keys are being pressed as they should. All right. Now we need to actually send a message to the Tetris main class that lets it know to uh, have keys be pressed. So how we're going to do that is we're going to create some variables, or we're going to create yeah, we're going to create some booleans. So we're going to have public boolean left, public boolean right. What? Okay. Public. Actually, uh, just to be lazy, left, right, down, rotate, and pause. And what this does is it what this does is we don't have to type out public boolean each time, we can just do this for each one of them. And then in here we're going to say left equals true, right equals true, down equals true, rotate equals true, and pause equals true. And sorry, this was my mistake. This should be down. Down. And this should be rotate. And then we're going to copy and paste this and do the same thing for key released. Except we're going to change this to released. 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 Released and released, and then change this to false, 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 and false. So now, if we run this, um, where's oh, too many brackets, okay. Now if we run this, so I press W because that's what my rotate is, and that uh, thing is what happens if you hold down a key because it gets called repetitively. I'll add in a check for that in the next episode, I suppose. But So if I just press it and release it, you can see rotate pressed and rotate released. 
same with all of the other keys and now we just go to our main here we're gonna actually create a controller object so controller control and then down here and this way we can actually access these variables from inside of this class and then down here in our initialize method we're gonna move this to control equals new controller this and pass in control and it still has the same effect everything still works but just so that we can access these variables and we don't really need these anymore so I'm just gonna remove all of these lines Uh, sorry about this. Okay. Mm. And now in our loop over here, we have this update method down here, which nothing is in currently, but now what we can do is we can print out all of the keys that are being pressed and not pressed. So, can tr so we can just access the variables through this, control.left, and I'm just going to copy this statement because I'm lazy, plus control.right, plus control dot down plus control dot rotate and then plus control dot pause okay so now we can see it's constantly printing false now I pressed up and you can see rotate this fourth column is true now press A you can see both of them or A for left, left and rotator true. Then I press D, you can see that's true as well. And then I let go of up, or, or W, which is rotate. And if I press all of the keys at once, here, let's see. I don't know why it doesn't want to do that. W, A, S. Apparently it can only register two keys at a time, which is something curious that I didn't really know. But, oh no, there's three. There's four. I wonder if I can get the fourth key. Whatever. You can see that it can register multiple multiple key presses at once, and it updates based off what I'm pressing on the keyboard. I don't think that's a fault of my code that it can't register all of them at once if I do somehow get my fingers on all the keys. I think that's just something with how much input my computer can take at once. But that's going to be the end of this tutorial. We are going to actually do something with this. Well, no, next tutorial we're going to limit this so like it only gets called once, because right now if we tried to make the block, uh, so if we had a block on our screen and we tried to make it go to the left each time it thought left was pressed, then it would just immediately reach the edge of the screen because of how fast this program updates in comparison to like what we can see. So what I mean is I'm holding A now, you can see it's true, and if this block was moving this direction, then it would instantly reach the edge of the screen and go past it since we haven't set up a boundary, but it would move faster than we could see because it's being called multiple times, or it would be. So we're going to limit this so that it's only called once per key press. But that's going to be in the next tutorial. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions about any of the code, leave a comment and I'll address it either in a video or if it's simple enough, I'll just leave you a comment. And if you want to see more of this series, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.